So we have um, David Hammond, and he does the classic, I'm going to fold my arms and like pump them up so my arms look bigger in my YouTube profile picture, which is a beta move. He says, red pill is male feminism, parentheses, you've been lied to, close parentheses. Okay. Despite having 217,000 subscribers, can you guess how many views the video has? Well, you would see it. It's 2.7 thousand views. 2.7K. So yeah. 1% of your subs watched a video in two weeks. They're either paid for or they're old boomers that sub because you said you were a Christian and then never open up YouTube at all. Mm-hmm. Let us begin. Life. Uh, to finish it up, though, I mean, to kind of bring it full circle. So feminism in the traditional sense, it worked. It ruined everything. It's only getting worse. You could say we're in like fourth or fifth wave feminism now because now we don't even know what a man or a woman is. Uh, I, wonder, I, I wonder if this guy thinks women should vote. You think he, you think he thinks they should vote? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think he's probably one of those feminists that's like, yeah, you know, w w women should do this and that, but I still think that they, you know, they still deserve rights. They still should be able to vote. I've I've heard it from like ninety nine percent of people who say feminism is bad are at least first wave feminists, including oh, yeah. Lauren Southern, who blocked me on my new Twitter account because she was talking about how red pillars are starting to become low cows. And I quote tweeted, I said, I literally red pill dunked on your entire life. And she blocked me mm -hmm. because, hey, you know what? Sometimes when you have a calm conversation that is truthful and it cuts a woman's feelings, that's worse than if you just scream at her and call her bad names. If any time in my life I meet Lauren Southern, by the time I meet her, she's going to be a uh, wrinkled old beanbag. And I'll be in the so prime tomorrow? of my life. I'll be in the prime of my life. Yeah, well, even worse, right? Let's continue. Uh, everyone's confused. We are all over the place. It Just YouTube um, mechanics. Bro, if you set up a camera and you set up a ring light and you're going to take this YouTube and you got 217,000 subs, why the hell are you slapping a water bottle in your hands? It's like a nervous tick. It's like when you say, we're here today... Um, for graduation um but you know uh people uh people uh you know, that's what it's like drop mm -hmm. the damn water bottle you're not working out you're in a cotton t-shirt you're not sweating the water bottle doesn't give you personality drop the water bottle and utilize your hands to communicate with your audience maybe that's why this video has under three thousand views because you weren't a good youtuber it, it's ridiculous. We're in the end times, right? Where men call good evil and evil good. So it's biblical, guys. This has to happen, unfortunately. Believe me, I wish it didn't have to, but it does, right? Things got to get worse before they get better. But red pill is the exact equivalent, but with men. Mm. Look at those eyes, bro. You know what I see? I see the eyes of a weak man. I see the eyes of a man who was taught to worship forgiveness and never to implement justice. And when men play the same game women play, it's a problem. I've seen these kind of guys in churches before. They yeah, usually really don't like me. They're like youth pastors or associate pastors. They come around, they're talking and all this stuff. And they just, they, they, they twinkle toe near a subject that I am well informed on and they'll ask me a question or they'll say something and they won't like the answer and they'll ask me to back it up biblically and I do. And they say, well, that's not how we interpret that verse. Mm. And I go, well, yeah, we no, interpret yeah. that verse differently. And they just look at me shocked. They're like, but, but, but Boomer McGee, pastor, who I've known since I was a boy, he is absolutely right in everything he says. How could you stand against the pastor? It's like, listen here, guys. Listen here. We left the Catholic Church primarily because Martin Luther wanted the average Christian to read the Bible and come up with his own opinions instead of being dictated what it actually meant by the priests. And then as soon as you form a little evangelical church, what do you do? You worship your pastor's words. 
You don't form your own opinions. Lord forbid you interpret a verse differently than your pastor. He's your Messiah. That is idolatry, and which is why I don't go to the major majority of Christian church churches are full of heathens. They worship the pastor, the Boomer McGee. They worship the money. They worship the AC. They worship women. They don't worship Christ. And that's why I don't really go to church anymore. It's depressing. Yeah, I agree. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm Roman Catholic. Or was raised Roman Catholic. At least the ritual is consistent. At least you can go to a mass and be like, my warrior ancestors said these same words in Latin. Right? With the, mm -hmm. with the, with the Protestant churches, though, Dude, they do some worship songs, and then it's 45 minutes of you don't know what. Could be complete cuckoldry. Yeah. Oh, so dependent. I mean, the, the biggest problem with it, though, is, like, you go there, and, like, they still don't preach what, or, like, even say. Like, they don't tell women to be, they tell them to be, you know, decent, but then they're, they don't push it for the parents to train their kids to be decent. So, like, I'll go, the gym I attend a bunch of the girls from my church go there and they are wearing did they get I see them in church with a long dress on and then I'll see them in the gym with these tiny ass like ass crack uh, shorts on and I'm like what are you doing like well, why do you go to church if you're just going to come here and be like this and so that just it makes me lose so much faith in the church not 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 in the faith but like I've I've never received more hatred from anyone else not feminists not anybody than hatred for for my faith from Catholics. Yep. Because I believe it so much more firmly than they could ever even think. Because I've actually only met three people in my life who have read the entire Bible, mm. like in person. And one of them was a uh, brother, like a uh, a a Catholic, a guy who like wears a Catholic, but you know, not a priest. Like a monk. Yeah, like a monk. Mm. My father reads the Bible. Through and through, once a year, he takes notes on it. He's got a big library, well, a bookshelf, with like 30, you know, 20-something Bibles on it. Each of them uniquely annotated by the year. And he'll write at the start of the Bible, the blank pages, he'll write about big events during the year. And his thoughts, like a little, not like a diary, but like big thoughts for the year, because it's only two pages. He said, when I die, I'm going to give you my Bible collection. And that's probably the best thing he can give me. I mean, mm -hmm. what else could you want? Like, seriously, that or $100,000. I've taken the Bible collection. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I've read the Bible. I'm on my 11th read-through right now. Still don't know shit. Don't know shit about it. Uh, but I'm working there. My favorite is to, um, <laughs> maybe this is sacrilegious. <laughs> I'll listen to some of the weird Old Testament stories about judgment and death and all this stuff. On a mm -hmm. light hallucinogen, <laughs> and like listen to it, <laughs> and I'd be like, I am, I am the Jewish judge, and I'm gonna beat the shit out of some Philistines. <laughs> <laughs> Let's continue. Right, I don't need no woman. I mean, doesn't doesn't Paul say it's better for you to remain unmarried? So that's biblical. You can explain yeah. that that's not biblical. You can say he meant something else, but if you, you know, the Apostle Paul said it's better for you to remain unmarried, but if you burn with passion, you should get married. Um, hmm. Okay, let's continue. Right. I'm not going to be monogamous. I'm going to continue. Okay, well, I can agree with that. Look, the red pill itself is a set of tools to become sexually attracted to women. That is it. People who take it as a philosophy and a lifestyle. Do you know what we call those people? Those people are sex addicts. If you're like, Red Bull, Red Bull, Red Bull, get my numbers up. I'm not monogamous. You could be not monogamous and a monk. You can be like, I'm not in a monogamous relationship because I'm not dating women. But if you're just like laying with random chicks, you're probably just, I don't know. The guys who, like guys like John Anthony Lifestyle and these other gurus, it's so clear that they're sex addicts. But why do they have such a pull on young men? Because... 15 and 16 year old boys, do you know what they care about the most in the world? Having sex. To cheat, to hook up, to spin plates. Just, it, it's literally, yeah, male feminism. How's that? Wait, wait, wait. Having sex with a lot of women is male feminism? Is female feminism just about having sex with a lot of men? No, that's being a hoe. 
because there was people, there was promiscuous people throughout history. The Romans were extremely promiscuous. They had like a competition between two prostitutes to see who could bed the most men in one night. Were they feminists? They couldn't vote. They had no military power. They were hoes. Well, what about a guy that sleeps around a lot? Is he automatically red pill? Was Genghis Khan red pill? You think Genghis Khan was like, I got to neg this woman this way. No. He burnt her city down. <laughs> it's just it, the idea that the, the feminism, you, you don't know history. A movement started on the internet that has zero power and zero government funding cannot be compared to a foundational institution of the West. Yeah. Is, is, like, it's on. almost like, I don't know, is he talking about like, like pickup, cook, pickup roach? Red pill, or is it like uh, no? He's the he's, talk, actual he's red talking pill. about pickup coach. He's talking about pickup oh. artists, right? The people. Who so he knows nothing. Yeah. Well, he's like much. he thinks, and this is the problem. Like we're being judged by people who think we believe the same thing as Myron Gaines because Myron Gaines has a lot of subs. Mm-hmm. Right. That's a, that's a damn shame. Yeah, we're being judged as sex addicts because gay feds are depicting us as sex addicts. <laughs> you know what let me make this exquisitely clear give me ten thousand dollars to fly down to miami on a sunday afternoon and if i kidnapped myron Gaines and i did a rectal swab and put that material under a microscope i guarantee you you'll find swimmers mm. and i'm it, and he represents me. An Arab guy. An Arab guy that drops the end bomb and is a sex addict who finds relationships on prostitution sites and takes naked pictures with men and works for the feds. He represents me. The feds want me dead. And you think... A federal agent represents my best interests. This is being stupid. Maybe if you weren't so stupid, the church wouldn't be in such a perilous state. But you're emotional. You think of the woman in your church that patted your head and called you a good, strong lad when you helped them move their luggage. And you will simp for the rest of your God-forsaken life because you worship women. If I die and go to heaven and I see simps like this, God, where's the high dive? I'll burn. Mm-hmm. Please, just let me burn. Oh, there's no right, way. Right, get my own. Like there's, there's no way that people like this go to heaven. Who knows? Right, who knows? Money, and then I don't need a woman. And what's very sad about that is that's not in a man's blood. A man's blood, whether these men like to admit it or not, is to build, provide, protect, and create a lineage, right? Create a. Okay. Do you know what else is a man's blood? <laughs> yeah, let's talk about what's in a man's blood. So, who's the most famous Roman back? Uh, fucking, ah, damn it. Uh, I, I can't, I can't, uh, Caesar. Yes, yes, there you go. Julius Caesar. Yeah. He was going to war against the Germans. He finally caught Vercingetorix at his capital city called Elysium. It was on a hill. It was on a hill. What Caesar did, because basically every Roman army corps was basically also a corps of engineers, very smart with math, you know, the idea that studying and discipline would help you to war is foreign to these gangbangers in Chicago. He built a wall around the city to prevent any of them from escaping. Now, there was a contingent of about a couple thousand um, heavy, heavy Gallic cavalry that was searching for him. So we had to protect his backside. So he put a wall around the wall. So two sets of walls to siege a city and simultaneously defend from Gallic raids and cavalry charges. And the Gallic cavalry was the best in the world at the time because they're goddamn crazy. Better than the Romans. And so during the siege of Elysium, in the city, they were running out of supplies. We don't have enough food. We don't have enough water or medicine. What do you think they did? You have to keep the warrior strong because you want to win the war. 
they sent out, they expulsed, expulsed every single woman, child, and non-fighting man. Well, there's a problem. The entire city is encapsulated by a wall. And so do you know what happened? Both sides watched over the next month as women and children starved to death between the fortifications. And wouldn't that's, a bunch of diseases too? Yep. That's what's in a man's blood. To watch women and children starve to death in front of you to win a war. But you want to call back to a man's bloodline and be like, you're supposed to have you're supposed to have descendants. You're supposed to protect and provide. Bitch, my ancestors were raiding people. My ancestors set fire to homes. Yeah, they murdered they people. Took what they wanted. They decapitated people. I bet one of my ancestors was a crazy enough motherfucker. He'd decapitate someone and then let the blood drip down his mouth. And I'm supposed to, yeah. you want me to emulate that? No, you don't. <laughs> I don't want yeah, to emulate if, that. If, if we did what's in our blood, they would freak the fuck out. Oh, my goodness, dude. <laughs> like, it's in your blood to sip. It's in my blood to burn. Yeah. <laughs> Just... I hate these calls of the past. Like, it's not natural. Think about what your bloodline demands. If every man did what his bloodline demanded, the incels would get laid in one night. Oh, absolutely. Every do you, day. Do, yeah. you think that would be, do you think that would be consensual? Uh, no. 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 Not even no. close. You, are, you want men to tamper and inhibit their primal desires. Saying that they need to do things based off their primal desires is the complete opposite of what you want. Yeah. <sighs> Anyhow, let's continue. Bloodline, right? Create the ham and bloodline. Create the, whatever your name bloodline is for you just to. I don't need a woman for that. <laughs> you don't need a woman to create a bloodline anymore. Now you need one to gestate the baby, but I don't need to get married. Yeah, you don't need a wife. I don't need a I don't need a wife. I don't need a girlfriend. I don't even need to talk to women. I can pay I can pay a woman and send my sample to her and then she can use a turkey baster and then when the kid is born I could do a paternity test and then I could then send the final payment and then the baby could get dropped off to my house by a courier service. I could literally never see a woman in my entire life and buy a son now. Isn't that amazing? Don't sound so, too good to be true. No, it's like 60, 60 to hundred thousand dollars. It's expensive, but maybe once food starts running low, it gets a lot cheaper. But yeah, yeah, it'd be yeah. more like a loaf of bread. Yeah. So the saying you need to continue your bloodline so don't be red pill. That's that doesn't work. You need to follow your ancestors so you don't be red pill. That doesn't work. What what else is he gonna say? Have sterile sex. To just hook up, never have any child, never have a wife. Your bloodline ends with you. That is one. A lot of guys are fine with that too. Like a lot of guys don't care. They're like, so. A lot of my ans distant ancestors or my ancestors' relatives, they died in war. They never had kids. Their bloodlines ended. They sacrificed themselves and they didn't get to continue a bloodline. See, now you have to sac sacrifice yourself to get a bloodline. And that bloodline's not guaranteed. Let's say you have a kid. You see one kid. It's a daughter. What's the chance she's going to have a kid? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, she's a feminist. Well, she's a corporate person. Well, she's trans. Well, she, what if your kid decides to be trans? Huh? Mm -hmm. So, like, the bloodline argument isn't particularly strong, in my opinion. One of the most effeminate yeah. things I can think a man uh, can do. And it's not what any man wants to do. Even if a man never gets married, let's say he, he maybe is on my path, right? May, maybe I'm going to be celibate serving the Lord just like Paul all, all the days of my life, right? Hmm. Are we surprised he doesn't have a wife and he's single? No. Christian women out here are literally making fun of you. I've seen them on Twitter. I want a masculine man, but they're not in the church. These women don't see you as masculine. They are cucking you. These women are in your churches. They look at you, ew, and they go bang atheists, and you're still telling men to simp. This is borderline cucketry, to be honest. This is this is very close to cucketry. Maybe this is your calling. My desire, my purpose is to still leave a legacy. I want to empower and leave as many of you guys or the world I can in a better place. You want the blood of Hammond, right? Think of any. I mean, 
I don't really disagree with how, you know, you should want to have a lineage and all that. You know, you want to have he says children. He, wants, he says he wants to leave a legacy. Yeah. My name is on three papers that developed three drugs that are in circulation today to treat lung cancer, lymphoma, and the third one's a strange one. But, oh, you should know don't the name. Yourself. It's like thrombo um, cytotic obliterans, which is basically when you smoke cigarettes, your fingers die. Really weird disease. Hmm. Yeah. Try telling a smoker not to smoke. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Like, What's no, wrong no, with dude, my finger? It's dead. What do I do? Stop smoking. Okay. Cuts back with another, after the amputation, another finger's black. What do I do? Motherfucker. So anyhow, <laughs> I would argue that my legacy is already leagues beyond whatever he's doing. So I've left a legacy. Can I just be a hedonist now? Is that is that fine? Because hmm. every single argument he's making is just really shallow on a purpose. Now, if he said a man's purpose is to build a strong family and ensure their survival into the future, I like that. Does that require yeah. a woman though? No. See, so you had to convince me that a mother is um, beneficial and not even that necessary. But when I look at the statistics of outcomes from single father households versus single mother households and dual parent households, single father households are equivalent to two parent households, and in some instances, they're better. Why do you think I got all the de degrees I got? Why do you think I'm so interested in science and philosophy and history? Hmm? I'll tell you why. I was raised by my father, and that was it. Zero feminine influence on me in my household. Why is chronic so crazy? Why does chronic lift so much? Why does chronic, you know, spend all the time in the lab? Why is chronic meeting with <laughs> the people from the Department of Defense to study? Because I don't have to worry about any feminine influences in my life. So I am the more I think about my life and my philosophy, I am really attracted to the idea of running a single father household. Yeah. No, I mean I, I agree. Like also like I need to stop saying like um women put a lot of emotion emotional uh tendencies into children if you only if, like men are logical and I, I it's an unpopular it's an unpopular opinion but i actually am anti-emotion like i i think that emotions are the enemy of logic you cannot make if you make any decision based in emotion it's more likely a bad decision if you make any decision based in logic it is more likely to be a good decision but if you you, you can only make emotional decisions based in logic so lo logic is king. So if you raise a child to be emotional, mm. they're probably going to be a piece of shit because they have no logical tendencies implanted in them from the father. Yep. But if you only have logical tendencies, you're probably going to be incredibly strong. Like just, just uh, strong things are going to be very attractive to you because you only have a logical thinking uh, implanted into your mind. If that makes any sense. Now, Here's how I see it. Emotions are the flavor of life. You should experience them and encourage them. Some decisions made off of emotions can give you really, really, really bad consequences. Sometimes, though, logically, you agree with your emotions, right? So, like, let's say I am married and my wife is cheating on me with... Um, Mm. Who would be the most embarrassing? Jack Murphy? Yeah. Let's say it's Jack Murphy. And I get so emotional. I get in such a rage. I um, go to the cow supplier and buy a lot of rope. And I do something with the rope in public with those two people. And I well, get the death sentence. That can actually still be a logical decision. Yeah. You, you, can, you can have an emotional base but a logical yeah. decision yeah. In, the, like, in the emotion. Psychologically, what are your goals? Do you want to live forever? Do you want to live with the embarrassment of having your wife getting banged by Cuck Murphy? Absolutely not. No, no. You can't. You cannot accept that. You can't. If you want to support the show, if you want to support the war band, consider donating to cashapp.cashsign.chronic.
That's Cash App about Cash App Under Chronic. If you want more red pill content like this, consider subscribing to Mac the Snapper. He sits in the red pill swamps and snaps the ankles of any simps that come by.